Welcome back to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. And we're talking today with Stacy Beers from the FBI Victim Services Division about the incredible work that she is doing with Wally and also that Geo is doing. We don't want to forget Geo. So yeah, so before our break, you mentioned a term, Stacy, that I, I want to ask you about, and that was the term facility dog. And a mm-hmm. lot of people aren't familiar with that. Can you tell us the difference? What is a facility dog, and how is that different from a service dog? So a service dog is a dog that performs a service for a person. Facility dogs are a little bit different in that they're purposely bred for this type of work. They may be trained in the same vein as service dogs or support animal-assisted intervention. You know, certainly Wally and Geo's basic training started at eight weeks of age, and it was very specialized to working with persons with disabilities. But then after they know where they're going to be placing the canines, then they really do hone in on the specialized training that they need. So, for example, Wally and Geo actually were exposed to a lot of stimulation. They need to be in an environment with a lot of people, a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. And so, you know, ADW knew that and really did work very hard to get Wally and Geo exposed to those situations in order for them to be placed with us. Yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, with all the noises and the smells and the, all the different things that, that they would be exposed to in those types of situations that you've been describing for us. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, and so tell us, as you've brought Wally and Geo into your work environment and into you and incorporated into your job description, have you had any challenges, Stacy, with that? You know, I'll just say that it's been a real honor. I've been in victim services for, this is my 26th year, and, you know, I've seen the work of facility dogs in the past, and I've seen the work of therapy dogs in the past. But, you know, being able to be on this end of the leash and be part of it is a a whole different experience. Uh, They've opened doors in a lot of situations that may have been a difficult situation, but they give us easy access to victims and decision makers, which has been really, really helpful. I will say that if I had to say that there was one challenge, it would be that, you know, normally we take a break to take them out to the bathroom. We could get in and out of this building in about mm, probably 10 minutes. Well, not so much with Wally and Geo. You usually have to double the time. You have to be aware um, when you're going to a meeting, you need to leave way in advance because you get stopped in the hallway. And I've never had so many people smile at me since I had Wally on my hip since October of 2015. So, you know, it's a challenge when you're in a hurry to get them outside to go to the bathroom or uh, things like that. But that's what I would say the challenges are. (laughs) Yeah, I would agree with you. I know that's what I said is there's no more just running into the grocery store to grab milk, not when you have an assistance dog with you because they are so gorgeous and beautiful that people are going to stop you. Yes, yes. true. And I'm sure you probably feel like a celebrity a little bit being with Wally. <laughs> Not so much. I say he's he's really, you know, he's the gift and, you know, the tool that we can use with victims. So I'm happy to stay in the background and just be on the end of the leash caring for him to make sure that victims are, are getting served and are enjoying what he brings. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us about an experience that you've had where you think Wally really made a big impact in your work with someone. I can think of one of the the first things that comes to mind. You know, what we know about the canine human bond is that they're unbiased and they don't judge people. And even though we are all trained and, you know, it's innate in a lot of victim advocates to not be biased and to be non judgmental, sometimes it comes through in the way that we might sit or the way we may talk to somebody or gesture. But Wally and Geo are incredibly unbiased. They can go into situations and they're just pure. And so I can tell you when we were responding to the Pulse nightclub attack in Orlando, obviously there were some cultural sensitivities. You have LGBT community. You also had Latino community. And so we had situations where we had some of the victims who were not out to their families and they were really fearful of seeking services. And there was this one in particular case where a young man came in for services after being, frankly, homebound for a number of days. 
he was afraid to come in. And when he came in, I was walking throughout the Family Assistance Center, and he collapsed on the floor, and he um, sobbed into Wally's coat. And I actually, you know, was not prepared for that because that had not happened to me in the past with Wally. And really just sat there, and I was just present with him, and I didn't say a word. Wally basically did everything just by his mere presence. And after a few moments, this young man stood up and he was able to partner with one of our victim specialists to actually go through the Family Assistance Center and receive a lot of the needed services that he he actually came for. The ironic part of this is that several days later, Melody and I were at a community event with Wally and Gio, and we, we hear this, Wally, Gio, and we're thinking, who's calling the dogs? And it was this young man, and he was out in the community with his friends, being able to acclimate, um, being back out in his support system. And so that will always stick with me forever in handling Wally because it was incredibly meaningful for him, and I was just so honored to witness it.